And uh, he wrote an article on a demonization of black men in media, activism, and academia. Uh, and we can't wait to get into this because Torrance says it's apparent that media of all types collectively offer a distorted representation of the lives and reality of black males. And I just had to have this brother on. So Torrance Walker joins us now from Jacksonville, Florida, to share his insights based on his research and, of course, keep it real with us uh, this morning. Good morning to you, Torrance. Thanks for joining us, man. Good morning, Mike. Thank you for having me on. No problem. Hey, so the article, I uh, read it, loved it. Uh, the Black Boogie Man Lie. Let's talk about black misandry. Uh, let's just say the, the fear of the black man, it still persists. It's still out there, and it's been that way since the existence of the black man in this country. What drove you to write this article, though, put this column out? Why was it so something that was on your heart that you had to get your passion out in writing? Well, I wrote that article in response to an article I read that came out of Vanity Fair about um, three weeks ago. It was called um, Dave Chappelle and the Black Ass Lie. And it was written about, mm -hmm. ostensibly about a critique of Dave Chappelle's comedy to, on The Closer. And I thought that article took the really valid discomfort that some black women and some black gender nonconforming people may have about Chappelle's work. And it kind of spun it out into this narrative that demonized all black men in general. And, you know, and I thought it also ties into what I call the myth of the black boogeyman, which is sort of like African-American men, ever since we got here, have been demonized. We've been seen as this sort of giant predator or a potential predator. And the only way we can be controlled is through state violence or um, the, uh, pol political violence or death. And I just thought it was very dangerous. So what I wanted to do with that article was try to present some counter narratives, bring some data into it to talk about the fact that there's a small minority of black men who can be dangerous, but the majority of us are not like that. And it's important to tell those stories. Yeah, we got a lot of images out there and we still are feared no matter what. I, I can be wearing a, a thousand dollar suit with a Rolex watch. I can get on an elevator and I'm still feared by certain people who might be on an elevator or the doors getting locked all the time. I still go through that to this very day. Uh, I want to talk about the Dave Chappelle situation in just a second, but I also want to bring this up because in your article, you talked a lot about the media's role in this. Uh, but so, there's so many different examples out there when it comes to us touring now and with the Internet, uh, social media, YouTube that's out there. Years ago, 30, 40 years ago, when we only had a couple of TV stations, uh, people had a perception of us based on what they saw in the media and how that was controlled. Nowadays, with so many different varieties of how black men are, who we are, when it comes to Barack Obama being a president in the United States, is there really an excuse? Don't you think people just view us the way they really intend to view us, in a sense? Oh, absolutely. Um, like you said, you know, we've had almost 400 years of kind of narratives of how black men are portrayed to how we really are. And with, like you said, with all the social media out here, all the different um, new content that's coming out, for us to be portrayed as demons, for us to be portrayed as boogeymen, for us to be portrayed as predators, that's a deliberate choice. And unfortunately, ever since the advent of moving pictures, this has sort of been a choice that Hollywood and the entertainment industry and media has made. Um, I talk about um, Birth of a Nation in the piece. Um, one of the first scenes after the mm -hmm. Civil War in the movie was uh, when black men were enfranchised. That's when you first started seeing black governors, black senators in the Reconstruction South. And the images of black men in that movie were basically like shuffling. You know, they were parodies of their old masters. Mm -hmm. They were eating chicken, uh, drinking beer and stuff in the middle of the Senate chamber. And unfortunately, a lot of those images, although they're not quite as blatant, have still been passed down to uh, what we're dealing with today, where you see black men as super predators. You see us as every time you look on cable news, cable news or even local news, Every time there's a black potential alleged predator, the pictures are darkened, the pictures look like boogeyman. You don't see that other narrative, and it's out there. So people are making deliberate choices not to push those images. The LGBTQ community is almost like a guise for the narrative that people want to put out there when it comes to, to black men. Uh, but what is worse, mm -hmm. people like Candace Owens, who's out there, who sometimes speak at, have, is the mouthpiece of what a lot of people want to say about black men, especially when it comes to this George Floyd situation, of course, an innocent man or, or, or uh, an un unarmed man who lost his life in the streets of Minneapolis. And still the descriptions that she uses as a black woman uh, and, and her views, of course, is when it comes to black people, those are some of the things that affect us as well. Yeah, you're absolutely right. But here's something I want to make clear. People like Candace Owens and people on the right 
those are easy people to spot. And you know, what she says is very vile, it's mm -hmm. very disgusting, and it needs to be condemned. But we also have to be aware that there are um, certain people in academia, certain people who work in media who are ostensibly on the left or progressives who say some of the same things about black men that people like Candace always does. If you go on social media any time of day, usually once or twice a day, some hateful narrative about black men goes viral, especially like on Twitter and on TikTok, places mm -hmm. like that. And if you go back and look and see who did it, a lot of times it's a black academic or it's somebody who's connected mm -hmm. uh, or pundit or somebody who's connected to the media and these things go viral and what they do is they give white people and white supremacists who already feel this way anyway more cover to say even more hateful things because they see a black face pushing this stuff and that needs to be checked as well and this is very prevalent in academia it's very prevalent in certain mainstream media spaces and that needs to be condemned as well it's very dangerous while still getting some of our sisters to understand that that we got their backs as well we're, we're all in this together so it's not us against them it's all of us coming up together I think what has to happen is we have to realize that a lot of times the people who are pushing these narratives are a very small minority of people. They just have very big microphones. You know what I mean? It's people who work in academia who can influence other people and people who work in media. But what we have to do is realize that the majority of us outside of that bubble are really connected. Now, that's not to say that there aren't issues between black men and black women and black LGBT nonconforming people. But those conversations have to be had from a place of mutual respect and a place of um, people who are not projecting their own trauma on the people to have those conversations. We got to open that dialogue up. We got to support our sisters and we got to support our men and we got to support all the people mm -hmm. in our collective. That's what has to happen. We got to support black people, period. All, all of us are in this together. We got to change the narrative some kind of way. We're doing that by having this interview and having you on. We want to have you back on uh, Start Your Day anytime, my brother. So thank you for writing the column and thank you for sharing your insights and your perspective with us this morning. Thank you, brother. Thank you for having me on any time. All right, Naja.